Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make water bases from two-part resin for your miniatures. Specifically I'll show you how I made these swamp bases for my death guard. The techniques I use could be applicable whenever you're trying to simulate soldiers walking through streams or oceans or anything of that nature. And hopefully I can show that incorporating resin into your terrain building and your base building is actually not all that complicated. It can give you some pretty interesting results. So sit back and let's go through how we make these bases. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some texture to our bases. And here I'm using MDF bases with a straight edge. I find creating a dam for the resin with the beveled edges of GW bases is pretty difficult. So I use just these MDF ones. And here I'm taking some DOS air dry clay. And I'm just covering it over the top to simulate, I guess, our swamp floor using some sculpting tools to add a little texture to it and then i'll just sprinkle on a little bit of grit on top of the clay and then we'll let it dry for a few hours and it will be ready to go and you can also add a few things like skulls or weapons embedded in the swamp to give it a little bit more character and then we're just going to prime them i'm just going to prime them gray with my airbrush and after I finish the bases, I'm going to go on and start painting some plastic plants. Now for these bases, I actually want some nice, bright, vibrant colors in there, some alien looking plants. I want my swamp kind of to be reminiscent of the Garden of Nurgle, to kind of have both death and rebirth, the themes of Nurgle present in my basing. So that's why I'm going with this purple, then highlighted with this red to give a very alien looking plant. A little bit different than what I did in my swamp experimentation video. I went really kind of normal, realistic swamp colors with sw with realistic vegetation here. I'm gonna go the opposite corner. I, I want to have nice, vibrant colors. I think it will match well with my Plague Marines who I also, I painted really dingy, gross armor, but then all the tentacles and demon features of the models I painted in bright colors that'll have that dichotomy. So I think it'll work well but you can obviously subdue the colors, go more realistic tones, and it'll look pretty decent as well. Here I'm painting perhaps my least alien looking vegetation, which is just this tall little leafed plant here. Just spraying that with a nice green color, and then I'll be going and highlighting it with some different yellows here to get a, a, a nice contrast on the plant. And plastic Plastic vegetation is a great thing to use for basing, either terrain or models, but you really do want to paint them. The stock paint jobs that come on plastic plants are usually terrible. They're usually really glossy. They look well plastic and they often are really unnatural tones, really often ugly tones of greens and, and such. So, so my suggestion is to always paint plastic plants uh, or else they're they're not really going to live up to their full potential. And here again, just hitting the edges of this plant with a little bit of yellow. Again, it's a time-consuming process painting painting these plants. We can do a big bunch in about a half an hour, and then have some awesome vegetation for your basing. And then after we finish this plant, I'm going to go on to one of my favorite plants to paint. And this was this weird piece of vegetation with like these bulbs on there. And I kind of thought they looked like eyeballs. So I went and I painted them red. I'm highlighting just those bulb sections with some bright yellow. I'm then going to go over it on some white. And then I think I might uh, later on paint in a little, little eyeballs onto those. And I think that'd be nice, creepy Nurgle addition to my bases. And once I have those painted, now I'm just spraying pretty much top down with a little bit of white. And that'll take care of most of vegetation. I will be mixing in some smaller cover to kind of hide where I'm attaching these to the base. I'll be using some flocks and static grass to blend these into the base. And once the resin is poured, we'll have a nice looking base. I do suggest having some taller vegetation as often. It's kind of hard to see through the resin some of the plants that you put in there. So you could put all this detail into your base. And then once you pour the resin, you can lose it. So you do want to put in some vegetation that will be springing out of the resin. That's at least what I learned after making those bases a few months ago, my ex experiment bases. So now we're gonna go back to those bases we primed and we're going to spray them a burnt umber. 
Uh, for this, I'm going to try a different technique. I'm going to actually be using pigments to highlight the base. I've never done that before. I've used pigments for rust and things like that and weathering of vehicles, but never for dirt. So I just took some of this Vallejo, kind of uh, this ochre yellow color. And I'm just liberally pouring it onto the base. It might look like uh, they're not blending really well with the dark brown, but once we put some alcohol on it to fix the pigment, it will subdue the colors quite a bit and blend them together. So here we are, I'm just spraying it with some isopropyl alcohol and you can see now there's less contrast and the colors kind of go together a little bit better. And then we're just going to glue our models to our base with some super glue. No need to pin or anything because as we pour the resin, these things are going to be stuck in there for all eternity. So we don't have to worry too much about our models falling off our bases. Otherwise, I always tend to pin models, especially to MDF bases. All right, now it's time to add some features and vegetation. Just like I did with my experimentation bases, I'm going to be putting some of these weird games uh, zombies down there thought they added a lot of character to my bases previously and the rest is just going to be that vegetation that I painted and I'm gonna try to get at least two or three pieces of vegetation on each base I want it to seem like uh, the area these guys are marching through is kind of dense with vegetation I'm trying to stick them next to skulls there again to look like maybe this was a world that Nurgle has conquered or is in the process of conquering and this brilliant alien plant life is coming out of what was a, uh, I don't know, a battlefield or uh, area of death. So that's kind of what we have going on here. So doing a lot of experimentation, taking different plants, seeing what fits with the base, and, do, and trying to do my best to make sure the things actually stick to the base, which was also difficult. And then once we finally have our vegetation adhered to the base, I'm going to hide kind of that transition from the plastic plant to my MDF base by adding just a little bit of coarse flock around it. It ends up, once you pour the resin, it ends up looking more like moss than anything else. It has a nice swamp theme, and here even just a little bit of static grass to give a little bit of a different silhouette. And now we're ready to start prepping for the resin. If you watched my previous video on experimenting with these swamp bases, the hardest thing for me was to find a good dam for the resin. And over the last few months, I've tried a lot of things. I have tried making cutout molds that I placed the bases in. I've tried using plastic card. I've tried a lot of things, and I found that uh, the damming either failed or I had texture left over after I had removed the damming material or there was too big of a gap. There was a lot of problems. And so I went and I went back to tape. I'd used painting, painter's tape before, which had left a really bad texture, weird adhesive to the resin. And it left kind of this cloudy look to them even after varnishing them. So here I decided to go with just scotch tape. There's not much adhesive on them, so I shouldn't get like this wavy kind of texture to the resin once I remove it and it is easy to cut and work with so as you can see I actually cut the cut the scotch tape about in half and I use just small pieces overlapping one another to help make the circle a little bit less lopsided a little bit more regular it won't be perfect using this method but it looks a lot better than my previous attempts and in the end, I thought this method actually did create some pretty uniform circle resin bases for me. So I actually do recommend using this scotch tape. It actually ended up being a great way to damp up the resin. And just to be completely sure, no resin leaked, I went and I took a hot glue gun just around the base here where the tape meets the base just to make sure because resin is sneaky. If there's just a small little gap, between your base and the tape it's going to come leaking out so this prevents that and there were several instances where i think the tape would have failed but luckily the that hot glue kept it contained all right now it's time to mix the resin so here is just some envirotex light resin is a two-part resin with a hardener and the resin itself so what you want to do is you want to make sure you have equal an equal pour of the hardener in the resin so here i just pour them into two cups make sure they're about equal you don't have to be exact but you want to be pretty close and then we're just going to pour the hardener into the resin and we're going to use here just this popsicle stick to then mix the resin for about two minutes and then after you mix it for two minutes, for some reason they tell you to then take the resin and pour it into another cup and then you mix it for another minute. It's that simple. You want to do this outside though in a well-ventilated space because this stuff is nasty 
and I actually use a respirator too because it's really smelly. I'm sure it's pretty toxic, but if you do it outside, you'll at least, uh, you know, you won't have to worry about any fumes getting to you. And then I'm just going to take a syringe here and I'm just going to liberally place it over the base. Now, one thing to remember is that res the resin is a really slow moving liquid. So as you place it, your often your resin level will drop as it evenly disperses across your model, but that might take a few minutes. So I usually put in my initial amount of resin covering most of the area. Then I'll come back and add a little bit more as the resin has evened out across the base. So we give them a day to dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to open up our dam and see what our resin looks like. So first I just remove the bottom of our base. I'm going to take off all that hot glue and then we're just going to go and remove the scotch tape, which sometimes is kind of a pain to get off. You might have to use a, a hobby knife to get under there and get it started. But once you, you start removing that tape, it should come off pretty easily. And then you'll be left with this, with a pretty nice circular resin base here. So you, if you look at this base now, it looks a little cloudy, but all we need to do now is add a little bit of gloss varnish to the resin and it will really become translucent and really start to look more like water there. You can start seeing into the base now as I add this gloss varnish. A few warnings I found is don't try and sand or buff this resin. I had terrible results. I found I followed some guides online using really high grit sandpaper, 2000 grit sandpaper, using scratch removers to try and get a really high glean, and it didn't work. It would always scratch the surface of the resin and look terrible. If you get a little bit of an uneven texture or something that doesn't look like on the resin, use a sharp razor blade and just cut off the resin in a straight cut and it will actually look pretty good and you won't have a scratched surface, but I would not recommend sanding, definitely not. So once we've glossed our base, now I just like to go around and bevel the edges of the resin because as you dam up the resin, there tends to be a little lip that occurs. So I just go around, I bevel it, we'll gloss that over as well, and it will look pretty decent. So an optional step here, if you don't want stagnant still water, you can add a little bit of Mod Podge to the top of your base and you can get form nice subtle waves. Mod Podge is really great for this. You're not gonna get you know massive waves coming during tide, but you can get nice subtle ripples just putting some of this Mod Podge onto an old brush and then just dabbing it across the surface of the base will create these nice subtle ripples. And again, you'll wanna gloss this over once it dries. So here are my finished swamp bases for my Death Guard army. You can see this process worked for a variety of base sizes. And I must say I'm much more pleased with these results than my previous video in which I had problems damming the resin. I didn't feel like my plant life I used for the bases looked very good or was very noticeable. And so the real keys here, I think, were using some larger plant life, plastic plants that stuck out of the resin, made it look like a kind of vibrant ecosystem here. I really liked how that turned out. I also liked using that scotch tape. It was actually a pretty easy material to dam with. And once you removed it, there really wasn't much in the way of texture left on the resin. It looked pretty clear, kept a pretty, pretty regular circular shape to the base. I think it looks very nice, and I'm definitely going to explore using this method for other armies. I've always wanted to make a Viking force for Saga, in which the, the Vikings were wading through high tide to go and pillage some unsuspecting folks on the banks above. I always thought that would be a nice thematic basing method, and I think I'll go ahead and give that a shot after seeing that you really can make decent looking water bases for smaller 25 millimeter to 32 millimeter bases. So anyways, I hope you gained something from this video. Maybe you'll go out and give two-part resins a shot for simulating water. I really don't think there's anything out there on the market that can make as realistic water effects as the two-part resin, the stuff by Woodland Scenics and other hobby companies don't quite live up to this stuff in my experience. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Take care.